Hey everyone, this is Amanda from DevotionInAction.com and we are starting out our Lent series today with an entry called Time for God's Love here in Nehemiah 7, uh, verse 17, 16 and 17, I guess. Um, uh, and I'm going to slide this underneath this page. I'm using the largest printable in this Dayspring uh, Illustrating Bible. So I have a lot of space that I can fill, which is nice <laughs> because uh, this clock is pretty intricate and it uh, took me actually a very long time to complete this entry. I got interrupted a couple of times. So um, as I edited the video down, we're gonna have like some shortcuts through the magic of video. So I'm just taping the page with some washi tape that I'm touching the sticky side with my fingers before I stick it down so it doesn't pull up the fibers of the paper. But that's going to keep that in place and see magic of video i've traced it out in pencil and now i'm going to trace it in black pen this pen is a faber castell pit artist pen it is india ink and does not react to water that's how i can trace this out uh prior to water coloring and not end up with black smudges everywhere and uh just a mess so if you don't have a pen that does not react to water you're going to want to do your tracing in pencil watercolor and then um and then trace out a black pen afterwards if you want that lined out look um, to your artwork. Uh, however, if you want to use uh, colored pencils or markers or whatever, you might choose to go ahead and line out in black pen. It's totally up to you. Uh, like I said, we're in Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 16 and 17, <clears throat> which says, But they and our fathers acted presumptuously and stiffened their neck, and did not obey your commandments. They refused to obey and were not mindful of the wonders that you performed among them, but they stiffened their neck and appointed a leader to return to their slavery in Egypt. But you are a God ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and did not forsake them. So this devotion, like I said, is called Time for God's Love. And in fact, our theme of this whole Lent series uh, for the seven weeks leading up to Easter is Lent for God's Love. We're going to kind of be focusing in on God's love during this season and as it kind of interacts with the different focal points of the season of Lent. And today... Uh, for this week, uh, this week is Ash Wednesday, the start of Lent. And some of you, um, maybe like me, you don't, you've never celebrated Lent before. You've never um, really learned anything about this. And you might think it's strange <laughs> and weird. And, and that's okay. Um, I Most of my life, I did not participate in Lent. And I did not um, <clears throat> know anything really about it. I thought it was something that only Catholics did, and um, I'm not Catholic, so um, <laughs> I didn't realize um, that actually there are um, several denominations of Protestant churches that uh, that celebrate Lent as well, and that um, basically it's it's a season to focus on drawing close to God and getting like prepared for Easter. Sort of like in Advent, we prepare our hearts for Christmas and we try to keep our hearts uh, focused on Jesus, the true meaning of Christmas. This is a similar thing. Lent comes along with a, a few extra uh, focal points, I guess you could say. Repentance of sin, um, because Jesus paid the price for our sin on the cross. And so like have recognizing the sin that we have in our lives and repenting of it and uh, changing our minds to agree with God and, um, and changing our actions uh, to follow his directives, that, that's, that's a focus of Lent. Prayer, communication with God, like making time in our lives uh, to... Like spend some time in prayer, spend some time talking with God, uh, expressing our emotions to him and then listening um, and spending some time to listen to him, to listen through his word, to pay attention to um, what he's speaking to us, <clears throat> uh, giving to others and caring for the needy, 
Um, some some denominations call this alms giving, um, choosing maybe a cause or a person or a family that you can bless uh, this Lent and giving to them of your time or money or hospitality or whatever. Um, that's a focus of Lent. And focusing on the, um, the gift of Jesus, his sacrifice on the cross and the power of the resurrection, like leading into Easter, seeing that those steps in the in the passion week the week before easter his steps to the cross and then uh, through the through the resurrection as we start to celebrate easter at that point so ash wednesday the beginning of lent is about coming together in repentance to mourn our sin it was a custom in the old testament in mourning to dress in sackcloth and put um ashes or earth on their heads and and mourn um like if someone had died and so that mourning over our sin is another way that we can express ourselves uh, during lent and so like just a little smear of ashes on the forehead um another meaning is uh dust to dust ashes to ashes like from dust we came and uh like to dust we will return for out of the ashes um uh, God created us. We are not our own. Uh, we've been bought by the blood of Jesus to live lives for him. So recognizing like who we are in relationship to a holy God. So in this chapter of Nehemiah, the people of Israel are in sackcloth and fasting. So they are um, they're fasting before God. They're in a difficult spot. And they're also realizing that their ancestors, their fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers and mothers <laughs> have not followed the directives of the Lord. Uh, this set of watercolors is, is the Starry Collection from Kirataki Gonzai Tombe. Um, and so that gold, I think, is really pretty for the clock gears and everything but you can use like kind of a, a bronzy kind of color that you mix up from normal watercolors too you don't need the metallic colors to watercolor this it you or you could use it like a dark color or a light color uh they could be painted white filigree metal that would be really kind of cool to leave those white and make the colors all behind them too um i'll be interested to see what you guys do what color choices you make as you are painting um, this clock. Uh, this is actually, my daughter walked by while I was painting it. She's like, that is so cool. I love clocks. And I'm, I do too. So <laughs> she co comes by it honestly. Um, so I think it is, it's really kind of a fun entry, although it is very intricate and uh, a little time consuming. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so these pe the people of Israel, they're in sackcloth and fasting because uh, they're in a difficult place militarily, like they're, they have enemies who are coming for them, but they're also realizing the sins of the people as a whole, and they want to repent of those sins. And it says that they came together in sackcloth, which morning clothes, with earth on their heads. And that sounds like Ash Wednesday to me, right? They came together to fast, to set themselves apart, as God's holy people and repent for their sins, as well as the sins of their predecessors. They read from God's word and they worshiped the Lord together. And I know that because Nehemiah 9 verses 1 through 3 says, Now on the 24th day of this month, the people of Israel were assembled with fasting and in sackcloth and with earth on their heads. And the Israelites separated themselves from all foreigners and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for a quarter of the day. And for another quarter of it, they made confession and worshiped the Lord their God. And then this chapter, it tells of the repeated rescues of God and the repeated disobedience of the people over and over again. The people turn from God and worship false gods. Or do whatever pleases them. And time and time again, God is patient and compassionate and forgiving, demonstrating his steadfast love, while his chosen people betray him numerous times. Verse 17 highlights the mercy and the love of the Lord in spite of the Israel's turning from him again and again. Nehemiah 9.17 
ends with this sentence, but you are a God ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and did not forsake them. It's interesting to me that in recapping the sinful behavior of the Israelites throughout their generations, verse 16 says that they acted presumptuously and stiffened their neck and did not obey God's commandments. That imagery of stiff necks, it appears in Proverbs 29.1 too. It says, he who is often reproved, that's kind of like corrected, like disciplined when you um, correct a child, um, yet stiffens his neck will suddenly be broken beyond healing. Like when we're corrected by God and we refuse his correction, intent on doing what we want, we're stiffening our necks. We're kind of like, you've seen it happen in a child or even in an adult sometimes when someone um, gives them some correction or, you know, maybe constructive criticism and it's just all over their body. They like tense up and it's like, I don't, I'm not receiving that. I don't like that. Um, uh, and they're going to do whatever they want, no matter what you say. That attitude makes us susceptible to being broken beyond healing. However, God gives chance after chance after chance, trying to give us the opportunity to be healed and not broken. He's, he's trying to restore us and heal us and bring us into that place where we're not going to be broken allowing us time to submit to his lordship and choose to obey him. Time passes on and we often make the decision to ignore God's instructions and commands. But as long as we are alive, we can still bend our knees like the children of Israel in Nehemiah 9 and repent before the Lord. His love extends through time, stretching out toward us over and over again. This season of Lent, we're invited to enter into God's love, remembering all that he has done for us through Jesus. It can be easy to feel critical toward the Israelites. Like, you know, why couldn't they just obey? They keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again, but don't we often make the same mistakes over and over again? We ignore God's directives, engaged in the busyness of our own lives. We do what we want rather than seeking his wisdom sometimes. We long for temporal pleasure and the approval of those around us rather than the approval of the invisible, eternal, holy God. I heard a pastor just this morning when I was listening to someone um, say, we exchange what we truly want for what we want in the moment. The thing we want like right now takes like we we sell what we really want for that thing and i think that's a really good um picture to have in your mind like are when we make these choices as we go about our daily life are we are we giving away are we selling the blessings that we really want and the the communion with god that we really want and the and the closeness and the absence of any barriers between God and us in order to have what we want in the moment that's going to not last. So our action step for this week is really the start of an action step for the whole seven weeks. Let's take these seven weeks of Lent to align our lives and our attitudes with God's thoughts. Let's take this time to embrace the love of God that's reaching out to us. His love that extended to sending Jesus to earth to die in our places and conquer death on our behalf. Let's start today by thinking about God's love for you. What are the things that you are so thankful for about his love? And then join in the Facebook group at Devo in Action. Introduce yourself to us. I'm going to have a post there for week one Chime in in the comments. Um, Introduce yourself if you haven't been hanging around very long, or even if you have, that way the new people can kind of see who you are. Um, And let, let, let me know, like, what did you, what really stood out to you about God's love as we enter into this Lenten season? Post your pictures of your art journaling if you want, or and let's let's leave some comments for other people. Like maybe encourage someone else um, 
in whatever they post about their thoughts or their pics uh, of Bible journaling. Um, I think it's, it's so good to have somebody to go along this journey with. We, it's, it's, holds us accountable when we know we're going to post something about it um, to go ahead and do that action every week, right? Let's not just share our art, but also the heart of what God is speaking to us with one another. And I'm going to pray with you, and then we can talk a little bit about um, the watercolor techniques for this entry. Dear God, thank you so much for your incredible love that you have lavished on us through your son, Jesus. Help us to turn our lives and our minds toward you during this season of Lent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I chose, I, like I said, I'll be interested to see what colors you choose for um, this clock. I, I chose three colors, basically. Um, that gold that I also mixed a little bit of uh, brown and black in to make it look a little more antique than it did to start with. And then kind of a burgundy, I guess, that I used lighter and darker values of. So sometimes I would use uh, the darker, like on the numbers. It's a little bit more of a wine uh, burgundy color. And then it lightens to almost like a dusky pink version of the burgundy for the circle that in between the gold one and the white one there and the hearts that are going around the outside. And then I'm using a blue, it's not a straight up blue, it's got a little bit gray um, in it. Ooh, did I put any green in that? Maybe a hint of green, not a lot though. Um, so gray and a couple of kinds of blue in there uh, to kind of dirty that up and darken it up so it doesn't look bright and shiny blue like a kid's coloring book sky. <laughs> um, and then um, I want different values of that on the actual picture. So um, think about like, you can think about like it rounding down and out, getting darker on the outside bottom edge and being lighter on the upper right edge. So bottom left edge, I've got a little bit darker blue and upper right, I've got a little bit lighter blue, and that adds a little bit of dimension to this. I'm also adding blue on the face of the clock to really make that gold pop out against it and um, giving some more interest to the face of the clock. You could leave the face of the clock white, um, but I just wanted to watercolor. <laughs> so there you go. Um, oh, also, as a note of interest, I did not prep this page. Uh, watercolors, if you're not going to be doing a ton of, like, a lot, lot of water, and because this is so intricate, I did not use a whole lot of water on my brush as I was watercoloring. Um, I kept the brush fairly dry as I was watercoloring because um, I didn't want... Um, it to move into the other little tiny intricate parts of the clock. And so I knew I wasn't gonna be putting a lot of water on the page. And so I did not prep this page and it did, does not bleed through to the other side if you're concerned about that. Um, when I do prep the page, I prep it with either clear gesso, just a thin layer of that, or a thin layer of uh, clear matte gel medium, which is actually my preference. I started out with gesso, um, but that has a grainy texture to it, and the clear matte gel medium is a little smoother, and I prefer the way that the watercolors move on it, so I've kind of switched to using that more often. And it's just personal preference as far as that's concerned. Those work really well if you have an entry on the other side that you want to make sure you want to protect. Um, you could put a layer there to make sure you don't end up with any bleed through causing a problem on the other side of the page. Or if you know you're going to use some really dark colors or a lot of water on the page. If I want to do some um, blending techniques, like uh, I really want to blend some things and, and maybe ombre down the page or something, then I'm going to prep the page because... Um, on, in a normal journaling Bible, the pages are a little bit slick and you wouldn't have to. But on 
the illustrating Bible pages, they are more fibrous and they suck the watercolor in. It's more difficult to blend colors. You have to work a little bit harder and sometimes you can even like kind of degrade the quality of the paper because the water soaks in so much. So as you try to, it'll start to like, um, pieces of the paper will start to ball up and come off of the paper sometimes. So prepping the page helps you be able to do blending and work the watercolor more. Um, but I didn't, knew I didn't really need to do that on this page all that much. So um, I didn't prep this one. <laughs> now, I didn't like how that clock was just kind of hanging in space. So I'm creating a backdrop to it. It's still going to be hanging in space, but it's going to have a nice like color around it, which is pretty good. I get, brought that gold back again and um, I'm making that darker around the edge of the clock and lighter as we move in. Uh, no, lighter as you move out to the edge of the page. I cannot talk or think today, obviously. Um, <laughs> and um, really like how that kind of sets this clock off off it, it looks it looks really nice that way and um speaking of looking nice take a look at the fact that you can look straight down on my page now that's kudos to my husband for christmas he got me a tripod rig that makes it where my camera can hang straight down on the page it's not tilted at all so you're getting like flat view which is awesome this is my first entry to do with it and i totally love it so yay for that just drying that page really quickly before i write on there the hashtag for this series is dia standing for devotion in action lent l-e-n-t 2024 and this is week one my handle on facebook and instagram and youtube yeah is at devo in action at youtube it might be at devotion in action um but come and check me out thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next week